We are now at the corner of the western wall and the northern wall of the city. I'm talking about the old city of Jerusalem. Then I just want you to see that there are no houses touched the wall at the western part of the city, of the walls, but the sun is in our eyes, then let me run away from it. It's a wonderful day. It's um, supposed to be six, 79 degrees. Now it's 65 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. I'm talking about Fahrenheit. You know, if you're talking about Celsius, it's going to be 25 degrees, which is amazing and not so humid. Then this is the western wall of the city, built by the Sultan, Suleiman the Magnificent. You can see in front of you Jaffa Gate. And remember, there are no houses. Then let me show you it. Uh, you can see that the Sultan used so many kinds of stones here, and actually he based um, his wall on top of an ancient wall. And we will talk about it soon. But you must understand that Jerusalem has <laughs> been destroyed so many times. Then the walls that you see here is new. Only 16th century from the 16th century, but um, you can find uh, in that small city walls from the first century, fifth century. Uh, soon we will talk about a wall from the 11th century and a tower that does not exist anymore from the Crusader time. But if you are talking about that, this is part of the moat that the Crusader built around that city because that part, the northern part, uh, it's the, how should I say it, they, uh, it's difficult to defend that part, mainly because look at that, it's not the highest place, and from the highest place you can easily conquer the city. Now we will talk about what the Crusaders did soon, but I want you to see This is Jaffa Gate, you can see the uh, houses, buildings um, next to it. And you can see the British entering in 1970 through Jaffa Gate, a Jaffa Road. Ah, here it is. That's the wall that we saw. And this is the street that is not exist anymore. Another thing that I want you to understand that on top of Jaffa Gate, you could see a clock tower that the um, Ottomans built. Here it is. It's not there again uh, anymore. Then. Why it's not there? Because the British actually said something very important. The houses are covering the whole city walls. It's not supposed to be like that. And now I'm talking about those buildings. And the tower, the clock tower, I have not. I don't have a good reason for that. The only thing that I can say that it's, um, it was ugly according to what the British said. That tour will take you not from Jaffa Gate, from a non-touristic area of, uh, of the city, from the Christian quarter, but a non-touristic part, to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, begins now. And today we are honored Margaret S. Reynolds that bought that cross, Jerusalem cross, and if I'm talking about Jerusalem cross, you can see that the big cross is Jerusalem, center of the world, and the other four, uh, whatever you want, four gospels altogether, five stigmatas, that doesn't matter, but this is a symbol of Jerusalem, and if you want to know how should you get it, um, then go into the description of that video and ask me uh, just push the link of uh, buy me coffee and oh, 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 if you couldn't, you couldn't find it please uh, just ask me how to do it and then I will explain you everything then the wall is from 16th century but you can see that the lower part is a little bit different and we already know that this is part of the moat that the uh, crusader build here and we know that this is where they entered the city and they knew that someone else can do it too then they build a big tower 
the Arab call it Goliath Tower because it's actually a huge tower. Tankard Tower is another way um, named for it by the Crusader King. And at the 11th century, just before the, they came, the Fatimid um, um, rulers ruled Jerusalem and they had two major earthquakes that destroyed the, the wall and the wall was destroyed anyhow because of so many wars and behind it it's the Christian quarter and you can see, <coughs> you can see um, St. Francis uh, College a friend, uh, from France uh, in it then in that case um, Constantine the Ninth um, asked the Fatimid to a permit to build a wall around the Christian border to defend them and you can see the wall oh look at the red yeah I don't know if you saw it um, then I won't reach that place um, then you can see that now you can understand why the stones are different some of the stones are from the time of King Herod Here it is if you can see the frame stones the big ones might be from the Jewish temple. Then we are walking on a road. To the left is the moat that the, Christ, the Crusader builds and part of the 11th century um, wall that defended the Christians. At 1860, 19th century, the situation inside the city and the Christian quarter was so difficult uh, a lot of um, diseases pollution uh, it was so expensive to live there then in 1860 the Christians the Jews the Muslims actually started to go out of the wall and the first one who did it were the Institute at that time the French had a lot of power in Jerusalem they were uh, good friends for the Ottomans. Then you can see some institute here. This is St. Louis um, Hospital. Oh, look at that. Look how beautiful it is. We live together with the sun. Excellent location. Hey, you can see me. Hello, hello. And it became to be an auspice. An amazing hospital. Look at the building, how beautiful it is. And in 1948, when the United Nations declared of two countries, Israel and Palestine, the uh, British left Israel and the Jews, the Israeli, Israelite, actually, uh, Concord took that uh, French compound to themselves. But that was a uh, no man land belongs to United Nation and Palestine oh Palestine never exists because Palestine was occupied by the Jordanian here and they actually changed the name of Palestine to the West Bank and um, then that part the inner city which was supposed to be owned by United Nation anyhow not by Israel and not by Palestine was occupied by the Jordanians then that was the border between Jordan and Israel until 1967 it was like that but for look at the light rail excellent way to uh, enjoy public transportation in Jerusalem then from one of those windows a nice nun actually no it's not nun it was a patient looked down and uh, to see the old city from that amazing window and a dentist fell into the no man land they had to find a solution then this because uh, he had to get it back uh, then the solution was very easy they called the Israelis, Israelis the Jordanians and the United Nations people and they were and they looked for the teeth which they found then a nice story isn't it this is Notre Dame de Sion which started as a 
apostle um, at the 19th century a lot of the Christians uh, pilgrims reached Israel the only problem is that uh, they had no uh, guest house for them and they built Notre Dame de Sion and it used to be a guest house now it's a wonderful hotel with a wonderful food and um, beautiful place to visit As you can see the flag it belongs to the Vatican and the light rail reaching from Mount of Olives which you can see in the background and from Damascus Gate as well and that's the way to Damascus Gate and the Mount that you see there is Mount of Olives but we will enter through the new gate It's uh, from 1889. The Christian quarter outside the wall was here. To enter the church, which is not so far away from here, they had to make a round tour. They had to go all the way to Damascus Gate, all the way to Jaffa Gate, that he already knows where it is. Then the Ottomans actually agree, and they open a gate for them. That's thanks to the French people who control um, they were responsible for the uh, Christian uh, in the city and beginning for all of them and later on only for the Catholic and until 19, uh, 1948 that was the border between Israel which is the other side to the Jordanian and you couldn't reach that place and um, from 1967 you can enter into it because now it's part of Israel Are we ready to go in? Let's go in. The name of it is the new gate because it's the new gate. It's the newest gate and um, it's not like any other gate. As you can see here, um, you can actually enter to the city without any problem. Usually gates were for the enemies. They actually build it against the enemies. And here you can understand that uh, it's not a problem to enter to the city. Why it's not important? anymore because there's already um, Jewish quarter, Christian quarter, Muslim quarter outside um, the city. Then why should they build a very complicated gate? It's called in Hebrew the new gate, the Shah Dash, and it's called in Arabic Babel Jadid, which is the new gate as well. That is the only place to celebrate Christmas in Jerusalem. It is so sad, I must say, uh, but most of the Christians, most of the citizens of Jerusalem are Jews and Muslims. Um, the Christians is less than 2% of the population. Then Margaret, we are entering with your cross to the city, then welcome to the old city of Jerusalem. You can see that there, there is an inscription of Jerusalem. It was made by a Christian family. I bought it from a Christian shop. The reason I did it is because they have only few, there are only few Christian shops in uh, um, Jerusalem. And remember, only 2% of them are here. Let's stop next to the map of Jerusalem and I will show you what, what I'm gonna do. The only problem with those tools is that I'm not planning it. I feel like I'm getting some visions, maybe from Santa House, uh, to reach that city from different places. Then, what we can see here, Jaffa Gate was right here. Remember, we saw it, we saw that there are no buildings here, and we started the tour from the, that corner Sorry, we started the tour from the north part, that corner, from the new gate. We are entering now to the new gate road. We will go through that street. The first, the Casanova, and we might, enter, no, we might enter from here, although I feel that I want to go through the Latin Patriarch Street, and we will reach later on to the Church 
of the hall and the Holy Sepulcher. Then this is the Christian quarter. Armenian quarter is right in front of you. And the Jewish quarter is here. And the Muslim quarter is the biggest one. Now I want you to see a little bit of, um, how should I say it, politic. This is the Jewish quarter. Someone deleted that name, the Western Wall, someone tried to delete it. And the Armenian quarter, some, someone tried to delete the Hebrew uh, name of it. Then you can understand that, that those are not uh, Israelis who did it. Then, let's start with the city in the Santa House. Yes, we do have Santa House. We'll be here, we'll be open. Let's say uh, the beginning of uh, uh, of uh, December, most of the most of the people who will visit Santa will be the Israelis, especially the children, mainly because um, uh, mainly because they remember it's like um, another reason to celebrate. It's like now is the Israelis started to celebrate Halloween, which is not a Jewish holiday. The new gate in Arabic, Hebrew, and English. It looks like Banksy. Uh, it's not made of him, but the idea of Banksy um, graffiti. It's too early, although it's Sunday, or maybe because it's Sunday, but s suddenly in that street, you can find a lot of good coffee places. I mean, really good coffee places will remind you a little bit of Europe then if you don't want to uh, feel Europe don't come to you there are excellent places to drink coffee in uh, for example Arabic coffee Armenian ceramic center which is a very good place for that and although it's not the Armenian quarter the Armenians were here for a long time and you can see we, we are at the Bab el Jadid which is the new gate heading to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And Santa House is to our right side, but if it's okay by you, we are going to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Oh, look how beautiful it is. I must say, and I'm happy to tell you, that I'm gonna have the first uh, tourist group on Tuesday, and we are now on Sunday, I'm um, talking about a couple uh, that subscribe my channel. And if you didn't subscribe my channel, this is the time for it. And we will walk all day to celebrate it. And that's going to be the first group. Let's... No, it isn't. Um, let's hope that it's not going to be the only one. Beautiful it is, and we are the only one. Uh, if you want to know how to enter Israel and what's the condition here, uh, enter to my Facebook account, Zahi Jaquet Tour Guide, and um, uh, roll it a little bit, and you will find it. You will find all the information. Yeah, let's go through the uh, Catholic part of the city. It's to the left of you. You can see San Francisco's road, but if you will continue straight and immediately to the left, we will go through the Greek Orthodox Patria. Following your cross. Margaret, my dear subscribers, look how beautiful it is. I hope that in about a month from now I will complain that there are too many tourists here. Please, please, 
Let me complain, please. That's the entrance to San Salvador. Uh, church, which is on top of it, and the Custodia Terra Santa. That's the center of the Franciscus uh, order that holding, actually, taking care of all the Catholic um, institutes in the Holy Land, or most of it. And they are already started to build the Christmas tree. Remember, this is the only place to celebrate Christmas in Jerusalem. The reason why it's not a big celebration, you already know, it's not a, a Christian uh, um, city and country. And Bethlehem, which is the center of that story, is so far, so near to it. And um, almost every year I'm celebrating um, Christmas there. And you can see Mary, which tells you that it is a uh, um, Christian, a Catholic part, but the other side, you will see um, Greek Orthodox compound and British, I will recognize it, it's St. George who actually fighting the dragon. Arab Catholic Scout groups group. Then Merry Christmas. Oh, you can see now Jerusalem cross and you can hear the bell. Remember, a cross that's unique only to Jerusalem, but on my buy me a coffee, you can choose between a Catholic cross or Greek Orthodox one. <laughs> Look at that. Another Greek Orthodox compound in the Catholic uh, quarter. And you can see that. Uh, it's like a mixture of uh, oh, well, let's listen to them. woke up at 5 a.m. Mainly I wanted to be in the city before the tourists would come and when I'm talking about tourists it's mainly the Christians in Israel and in Palestine. They do every day half of course. For the Israelis it's a regular day for the Jews. Uh, Sunday is the first day of the week then they are working. We entered to the Christian Quarter Street. Look how beautiful it is. When the tourists will be here, all the shops will be open for them. But now there's no reason for that. It's mostly for the tourists. That street is mostly for the tourists. Now, a lot of the places that are for the um, Christians themselves, or for the local uh, people, I'm sorry. What you can see here 
is part of another gate. It used to be part of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, actually. The other side of it is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And it was sealed by Salahadin. And uh, from that moment, no one can enter through it. They even built a mosque at the other side uh, that will protect that idea. We call it the Arch of Virgin Mary, but it looks exactly like the arch that we will enter, the entrance that we will enter through it. And remember, if I told, I told you that if we will continue straight and then left, we will reach the Greek Orthodox Patriarch and street. Uh, in about a uh, few minutes, we will be at the entrance of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And if it's okay by you, we will visit a few places of it. Together with the Red um, Cross, you can see how you saw a Franciscan uh, monk. And remember the sign that says, you know, electric bicycle? All right, there is a sign. Mm, I can feel, I can smell all the incense of uh, the church, which is so close to us. The church. The church was built on top of the site that King uh, of uh, that Jesus actually been crucified, died, and resurrected. The church was built 300 years after that. It been destroyed so many times, but not so far away from the new gate, outside the wall, there's another compound called the Garden Tomb, and that marks the same story, and it's owned by the English Church. Armenian monk, Mount Ararat is on his head. And uh, in front of it you can see Mask of Omar. According to what the Muslims believe, Omar, which is one of the Khalif, came to here and he wanted to pray at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And, they, and he said, if I will pray there, the Muslims will turn it into a mosque. Then let me pray outside of it, right here. And, uh, uh, and um, they will build a mosque next to it uh, by the Muslim law. Um, if you're not Muslims, you cannot go in to it. And I've never been there. You can see here the entrance to the Holy Sepulchre, the Holy Tomb of Jesus. And I came early because I wanted to be part of the ceremonies that I have. It's Sunday. Jesus will resurrect now. the facade which is mainly from the 12th century um, but remember the church is from the 4th century but been destroyed so many times and let us enter into the church and before we will climb up to the Golgotha which is there I want to go to, to the ceremonies that uh, begin now Armenian Coptic is in front of you, the Egyptian
this is the tomb of Jesus. We will talk about it, but I want to reach the Coptic. This is the ceramic part and they are getting ready for their liturgy. Ceramic are the Church of Surya, they actually will pray in Aramite. And this is the tomb of Joseph of Ramatia. How are you, Father? I love the church and fun. I love the church. Margarita cannot go into the tomb with a the camera. Then after I will finish taking that video, uh, if it's okay with you, I will enter to the uh, tomb. Um, later on, and I will pray. I will bless the cross, sorry. We will start from the end this time. This is where Mary met uh, Jesus. And he said, please don't touch me, I'm not... I'm not pure yet, I didn't reach my father. That's where Mary Magdalene was standing. I hope that you can hear me. And that is where Jesus was standing. The tomb, it was buried there. It wasn't like that. If you saw the tomb of Joseph over Mithia, then you know it was a cave, but it'd been destroyed so many times. This is the entrance to the tomb. The candle is where the angels actually stood. And the inner part is uh, uh, the tomb himself, which is empty, of course. This is the Armenian chapel, and according to the Armenians, um, that's where the women saw the crucifixion. And I'm usually lighting candles in the here, mainly because it's it's next to the tomb. It's important for me to tell you that um, if you are supporting me at Buy Me Coffee, because still, uh, I didn't work for two years, uh, um, and you will ask me to light a candle for you, I will do that. And I will do that uh, soon after that video.
and after he died on the crucifixion place, and we will actually visit it soon, they purified his body, Joseph over Matthias, back to get the body of Jesus as quickly as they can, because they've just been, uh, supposed to be buried uh, at the um, same day. And the same day, the day ends at 5, 6 p.m. Then if today it's Sunday, at 5 p.m. it's going to be Monday, according to the Jewish calendar. And that's where they purify the body of Jesus. I'm sure that you can see that it's shining and you cannot actually feel the smell of it. But this is the anointing oil. Let's climb up to the Golgotha. We're climbing up from the Catholic part. You, could, you got the message that this, is, this church is owned by everyone, except of the one who believes that the garden tomb, or except that the garden tomb. That's where, where they strip him from his clothes. See that chapel, the French chapel. And that's where they nail him to the cross. Part of the Via Dolorosa station. The crucifixion is here. I mean, this is the crucifixion site. See Jesus in the middle on the cross. John, the beloved one, the Golgotha stone, and that is the exact spot of the crucifixion. If you reach your hand, you will touch the bedrock of the Golgotha. Beautiful. Then, thank you very much for watching that video. Please subscribe my channel and be part of my my family. See you in my next video. Bye bye.